All right. Well, Mike, let me say on camera now what I said just a moment ago, and that is how much I enjoyed Dominic and Eugene. Thank you very much. It is a really beautiful film, and it, it, it worked for me on so many different levels. Mm. But um, I was very interested last night following the screening at the USA Film Festival when you talked about how the script had come to you when you were still doing MASH. Yes. So pick up that story for me. Sure. I, uh got a letter from a young man, uh, I think it was about 1979, and he said that uh, he'd recently gotten out of the service, he had great, great desire to be a writer, he had no particular training as I recall, uh, he knew that's what he wanted to do, but he was very frustrated because he'd send his material out and it would be returned unopened, unread. And he said, I, uh, uh, I read that you're an ex-Marine, I'm an ex-Marine, and uh, this story I've written is about my service to my time in the Marine Corps and at least I'd like to know that somebody read it. He said, maybe it's lousy, but at least I'd like to know that somebody read it. Would you please do that? So I wrote him back and said, sure. Uh, I said, I'll have to be patient because uh, it'll, be a long, it'll be a while. I've got a lot of things to read, but send it along. So he sent me this tome, and uh, I kept it beside my chair for a long time on the set, and finally got around to reading it. And it, I thought it showed very, uh, a lot of promise. He, um, it wasn't a story I wanted to do anything with, but um, he had a great ear for dialogue and, and a nice story sense. So I simply wrote him back and encouraged him and said, look, you know, we need writers in this business. I encourage you to keep, keep at it. You really obviously have the ability. And he uh, thanked me voluminously. And then about six months later, wrote me and said, remember me? I'm the guy you encouraged to write. Here's another story. What do you think? And it was Dominic and Eugene. Was it in any sense at all for him autobiographical? Oh, no. No, uh, Danny um, told me that he, in his youth, had known of, as one does casually, a man who uh, collected trash in the neighborhood who was retarded, was slow. And I guess, as kids do, he developed a certain affinity for this character. And then later on, uh, an incident happened in, uh, in his state that he just read about um, that uh, triggered for him the story, one of the, one of the elements of the story that I don't want to go into for the audience that hasn't seen it. And he just put them together and, uh, in his head and crafted this wonderful, wonderful story. And what is that man's name? Danny Porfirio. He's the one that's credited as story by on the, on, on the screen. Yes. Um, what major changes from that first draft or that first screenplay that he presented, uh, what major changes did you make? Actually, um, his story really dealt with the relationship between the two brothers. It really caught Nikki wonderfully, and that's what, uh, what won my heart. Uh, um, it was really a matter of tailoring, fixing. There were some extraneous uh, story elements that, that were unnecessary, uh, and he had a whole um, anti-climax about a court case and all kinds of stuff that really was not uh, relevant. Uh, but generally speaking, the story was there. Jennifer and uh, Dominic and Eugene and uh, the whole situation that develops uh, was there. It just needed to be kind of condensed and refined and massaged a little bit. So that's in, and, and the structure had to be uh, dealt with. So that's why we brought in the professional writers. In casting it now, I, as I looked at it, Mike, I just thought, you could never improve <laughs> on this casting. I agree. You, I agree. you just couldn't. But how did you know, did you have some preconceived notions, or how did you know that these two men were right for the roles? You go on, on some level, I think you just trust your instincts. Uh, my sense of this picture has always been that there's a, um, that it's blessed in some way, and that, uh, and that if we just continue to have faith, it will be okay. So, you know, we got a script that we loved, and then we started meeting actors, and some of them were very attractive and very uh, exciting because they had big names and they had a certain box office appeal, but we just felt we'd wait and see if there wasn't somebody that really kind of uh, uh, struck a chord with us. And Tom walked in the room and sat down, and it was all over as far as we were concerned. And then we sort of sharpened our intense, the intensity of our search for uh, Eugene. And when Ray came in, the same thing happened. So uh, it was just, I, I don't kind of know, without getting philosophical and personal, what to ascribe it to, but it's, uh, it's, it's a great feeling to know that, uh, that those things do happen, that this perfect combination is available out there. 
Weren't you a little surprised, though, that uh, given the recent performances of these two actors, that they would be so perfect for your film? Because now, Tom Hulse, we were all thinking about the giggling Mozart in yes, Amadeus. Yes. Well, what I, knew, <coughs> excuse me, what I knew from Amadeus was that Tom was a wonderful actor. Um, and I frankly wasn't, it was my partner's idea to see him. I, I couldn't quite see him as, as Nicky. But when he came in and sat down, there is this one, Tom is a terrifically talented man and very bright, but there, I think the single quality about him that was most arresting for me is his innocence. He's a, he's a wonderfully innocent young man, and that, of course, is exactly what we needed for Nicky. Ray, on the other hand, I didn't know. I didn't know his work. Uh, I just knew, I mean, he's very uh, striking looking and he's terrifically bright and very sweet. Um, so he seemed to be Eugene, and it wasn't until after I met him and decided that he was the right guy that I saw his picture something wild and he scared, <laughs> he scared the devil out of me. <laughs> I thought I had real second thoughts about that. I thought, wait a minute, this guy is a little too ferocious for me. Um, but we had another meeting with him and talked, and he is every bit as sweet and, and, and thoughtful and, uh, and genuine as he appears to be as Gina. In other words, his own personality is closer to Eugene. That's right. His own personality is much, much more like uh, Gino than it is like, uh, I guess, Ray was the name of the character he played in, uh, in Something Wild. But my God, he was volcanic <laughs> in that movie, and it really was terrifying. <laughs> My audience would hate me if I didn't mention MASH mm. with you, if we didn't have some little talk about MASH. Um, first of all, uh, do you look back on those days as the best and happiest days of your career? Well, they were certainly some of the best and happiest days, not only of my career, but of my life. Uh, you know, that was just an extraordinary time to be able to work, do work that I, of which I was proud with people I, I loved. and. Uh, and have the response we had was uh, really kind of uh, incomparable. You know, the experience was uh, was kind of gigantic in a lot of ways. Um, my kids grew up during that period of time, and uh, we all shared, you know, many uh, personal triumphs and tragedies during that period of time. So you become very close, and the fact that we were able to do that within the context of, of, of a show that that was so good and said so much to so many people around the world and was received with the open-armed adoration that it was, was uh, is just something that's, you know, it's, uh, I guess one could decide to rest on one's laurels after that experience and feel totally fulfilled. I, uh, uh, and, and I feel great about it. So instead of feeling that I am driven to go on and prove something, what I'm now fortunate enough to be able to do is just kind of relax and do what appeals to me and make the movies or the television stories or whatever that that I'm moved to make. It looks like MASH will go ad infinitum. It, <laughs> it just certainly looks, does. <laughs> in syndication, uh, I mean uh, around the world yes. it plays and it looks like it will just go on and on. Could you possibly just live off the residuals of that? Not unless one chose to live on very meager <laughs> means. Uh, you mean no, residuals no, are a myth? Well, residuals exist, but they don't exist to, in the degree that a lot of people seem to think they do. Unless one owned a percentage of the show. I mean, the profits of the show are enormous, but uh, that's not. Uh, those aren't divvied up among the actors. Uh, uh, there is a very uh, real standard of residuals and it's a declining scale and of course because of the, as you indicate, the, the number of times the show is run, we're way down in terms of the scale. So it's a, you know, it's a nice memory and it's better than a poke in the eye with a sharp stick, I suppose, but I'd hate to have to live on it. <laughs> well, it, I just hope that, um, that Dominic and Eugene does well for you. I, 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 I'm sure you do have uh, just a little bit of reservation about um, how the, the film is going to be marketed and uh, getting, if people see it, I think they will just fall in love with it, but getting them in there. Yeah, that's been the experience. Uh, people who see the film, as you say, just love it. They, they, they love Nikki and they love Gino and they really root for these guys. And the problem with a story like this is how to market it. Uh, you don't want the, uh, I think we made a mistake with the original uh, art in that it became a little forbidding. There was a question about is it too deep and dark and stuff? And in fact, it's a very heroic story, a very triumphant story. And, uh, 
And that's the point I'm trying to make to people, that it is a story that'll make you feel good. It'll, it's a story that'll make you feel like there's, there's reason to hope and go on, and, uh, and that, uh, that effectively what we have as, a, as the protagonist is maybe the world's most unlikely hero. Very well put. Thank you. Mike, I hope it does well. Thank you. Thanks for coming to Dallas.